En dan in 3, 2, 1, go. Uh, ja, langer dan een maand geleden. Ja. Ik moet nog steeds uh, een, uh, een nieuwe intro maken, maar dat komt goed hopelijk. <laughs> ik ga er een, ik ga er een beetje kutten met... Uh... Ik weet het niet jongen. We komen er vanzelf achter. Maar we moeten toch gaan beginnen nu. Met commentary. Hallo, ah. hallo, hallo en welkom. Hij pakt mijn microfoon niet, heb ik het idee. Hè? Oh. Hallo. <laughs> Godverdomme. Sunny has. Uh... Has lost the way uh, of commentary. Yes. We look to our first match. Walking to the ring. Yeah. Well. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. Um. Wow. You really lost your way. Son. Yeah. No. I'm sorry. This uh, yeah, <laughs> best pay for you start yeah, ever. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the regular Zodiac over here. It's Sunny Sapphire and of course at Ultimo Stars. Um, great to have you here. Um, quick question. Why aren't you at bedside? Well, um, we are in a theme. You know that. Um, yeah, my w wife isn't in a theme, So I couldn't get a plane ticket. And I was knocked out by someone. I don't know who it was. It's not me. <laughs> because I don't yeah, see the reason to, you know. I, I... What the hell did Predatonis have in his hands? Who was that? Uh, it's not the whole wide world, so... um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I wish I knew. But we have the... So, how do you feel, Sonny? How do I feel? Do I feel... feel I feel... In the home country. In the home country. Of the darkness, Phil Nemeth. Our own little terrorist. I mean, I, 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 I used to think that going towards the hometown of a terrorist would be more in the Middle East. But uh, well, it could be right here in Europe. And that's you, where we you, are. You, 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 you know that they aren't, they are, aren't a part of the European Union anymore. So maybe, maybe they became a terrorist organization. Ter the terrorist entire country. country. Just because they were kicked <laughs> out. Because they did, didn't have money anymore. Yeah, the entire country. The entire country just became a terrorist infestation. Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, it's sure. Probably well, Bill as their leader, you know, as B Bill is. Kind of all right. delusional, probably like all the other people in Greece. All right, but enough of our Bill. He'll be in action later on tonight. But first, we have our UCW X Division Championship match between the champion Baphomet Satani, who beat Jack Harvey as the madness at Midsummer Mayhem, against one of the newest superstars here in UCW, one of the most polarizing figures we have in our company, Brad Adonis. And he just uh, he just secured his win in a six-pack challenge newcomers match at Midsummer to gain this championship opportunity. Quite a, a fast fashion. Like this, this is a month in between, and he's already here at, at this point in his career, already fighting for a championship. And if he wins, if Brad Adonis wins this, he, he may be one of the fastest rising talents we have yet in UCW. Yeah, well, it's quite on the level of what Raven did at Kingdom of Immortality, quite coming in and immediately going for championship. It's basically yeah. that. So if he's able to beat the demon here, uh, it would be quite an upset, I think. As be, oh, immediately a big boot by the demon, Baphomet Titani. He really doesn't let Brad Adonis get a head start on him in this championship match. 
No, and um... oh my god, a cartwheel from the big man! What? <laughs> and a knee strike to follow it up with, and he is going for the first cover of this matchup. Referee getting into position. One, two, and a kick out by Baphomet at two. That's almost almost enough. That was almost enough. Of course, we weren't there when Bradadonis won that uh, number one contendership match. We weren't there. Uh, we had some problems, especially with Sonny, as Sonny just didn't want to do commentary anymore. I couldn't find him anywhere. Um, well, Sonny had <laughs> you know. too much time on his hands, too much preparation for his own match. And now a pop-up power yeah, ball by Bafma Satani, immediately going into the cover. The two! And Is oh, that gonna be a kick Ooh. out, kick out, kick out. No, because, a you know, good kick you, out. Can, you can say that it was my fault, and that's all fine and high and Dandy by me, but the fact of the matter is, it is not my fault, as I had a match with Dark X, so I had to prepare just like any other superstar would. I mean, I know, I know, Ed, you stay on commentary in preparation of your own matches, but you know, I've seen a trend develop with you and sort of that situation. Every time you no. do that, you don't no. win. So, my hypothesis was. If I just focused on myself and the match, then I had a greater chance of winning. Yeah, sure, son. It's, it's just, impeccable just knowledge. Just throw it all on my side. Throw it all my side, because I haven't had the most success recently. It's not just recently, it's kind of your At least today career. I became a father. Well, you don't know that yet. Has it been born yet? Well, no. I haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen anything waiting. on I'm social media waiting. yet, so that means it's not born yet. No, I'm still waiting. We're all still waiting, Ed. We're all still waiting. As you see Baphomet escaping. Yeah, if arm you arm. hear uh, any construction noises, that means uh, that they're trying to rebuild Greece in the image of Bill Mehmet. That's what you get with terrorists uh, running uh, the country. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. I haven't heard any construction noises immediately. Another big boot by Baphomet Satani. And it seems like Baphomet, he has re reintroduced the open challenge formula to UCW. Something that Santa Cool tried to start, but then immediately lost. Um, Baphomet has done it three times now. And three times he has come out on top against the likes of TJ Young. This is a, and this is a different Baphomet. Uh, I, I mean... He has horns, for fuck's sake. Well, yes, but <laughs> it seems like Brad Adonis is trying to hoof those horns off by <laughs> by trying to face smash them into the turnbuckle. Really not really the brightest idea out of Brad Adonis' playbook at this point. As we see him going to the ropes. And now I'll just... But Brad Adonis isn't looking, af isn't looking afraid of the demon. He, he is... Well, no, but he is doing surprisingly Anything well against the demon. I mean, down. yeah, he but he's doing surprisingly well. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like uh, he's now in an accolades camel clutch submission move here by Baphomet, and we see him trying to crawl to the ropes. But no, doesn't doesn't. No, he breaks out of the grip, throws it underneath, throws up the legs of Baphomet, and now a couple of punches. He's like a big flamingo. Uh, you, yeah, well, yes, but we already had a Flamingo in UCW, a corner clothesline now, of course, in the form of Adrian Peck. So this might be the next coming of Adrian Peck. I don't know. I, I think this is more a Flamingo. I mean, look at his pink pants. Well, he's yeah. going for a cover and the two count and Baphomet's able to kick out. Well, I, I mean, like, I mean, oh... Ooh, impressive uh, mat-based wrestling by Baphomet there. I mean, I know ever since he became the demon, he has been so such more of a powerful force here in UCW. I don't at this point. I don't know who is going to stop the demon. I mean, he defeated Madness, and that wasn't a small feat. Oh, a spear! A spear by Baphomet! Ooh. One, two. And free and Baphomet Satani successfully defends his X Division Championship for the fourth time, ladies and gentlemen. The fourth time that Baphomet has defended the X Division title and came out on top. Who will take it, Who will take it off Baphomet? Who can can win against 
do it. Maybe I need to pick the pick fight with the demon. You know. I, I, don't know. I need. I need. I need some purpose in wrestling. Life. Oh, in, 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 okay. <laughs> I don't know, Simon. So, I'm gonna say this, we are going to take a small break and we'll be back once the entrances of the next match will begin. Congratulations to Baphomet Seitani for regaining his X Division Championship, I should say retaining his X Division Championship. And this means that the open challenges on Power Struggle will continue. So if, you're, if you want to be in line, make sure that you are there on Wednesday. To the underground, other underground, where you can't see a thing and you can't hear a sound. Little peep, omen 13, we hold it down. We could take your fucking industry and burn it to the ground. Get the gas and light the matches, then we dance around the ashes. Get the message to.
should be an incredible matchup. I mean, both men have a sense of offense. Oh, what's happening here? At I mean, th we were still waiting for the entrances of Dark X and Bill Nemeth, the hometown hero. What the but hell? it seems like Johnny Riddle is attacking, <laughs> is, is attacking his own tag team partner here in TJ Youngblood. Johnny Riddle is going crazy on his tag team partner. This is insane. A power bomb. What the fuck is happening here? This so has to be a plan by Justin. This has to be a plan by Justin. Everything that is happening with the following is something that Justin wants and he gets everything wait it seems like Johnny Riddle is walking out but now uh, we are going to the Dark Axe entrance we'll get you back soon an update on the whereabouts of Johnny Riddle and TJ Youngblood Big time handicap match coming up next, guys. And unfortunately, I think it's safe to say that somebody's going to get seriously hurt here, Cole. You can count on it. All right, here we go. And it seems like this has become a two-on-one handicap match. TJ Youngblood all on his own against Dark X and Johnny Riddle, guys. Johnny Riddle is gone. Johnny or Riddle not. has left the arena yeah, after decimating TJ Youngblood. And now it seems like Dark we X with his runaway Oof. powerbomb. Is just gonna pick up the scraps, and it seems like the new followers of Justin are decimating the old follower in TJ and Youngblood. And if, uh, if someone doesn't know who Dark X is, well, because of our new lighting, our new lighting here in the arena, you can see him quite clearly because he glows in the dark. <laughs> That's what he does, and now we see the hometown hero, the hero of Greece with the darkness demise. The, the darkness demise. But it seems like the hero, He's not the hero yet. is not done saving. He's this not a hero. It's Bill. Bill. country and now another darkness demise. 
and darkness is being demised here. The demise of the follower. No, and what? he f he pins, but he broke it up. He broke up his own pinfall, ladies and gentlemen, because he feels Why are you like he like isn't like done. <laughs> no, Bill Nemeth. The hero and again another darkness demise to the evil, the evil that is TJ Youngblood in the eyes of Bill how Nemeth, Dark X and Justin. I don't know, but that is how he is perceived by his fellow, or well, used to be uh, followers, because Bill and Dark X are why, decimating him. Why are you acting him. like an auction announcer? I can Go do a once. lot. Go I can twice. do a lot. <laughs> I can do so much. <laughs> I am a multitasker. And again, the throwing power bomb into the ropes by Dark X and TJ Youngblood won't get it up for the free count. He won't even get up for the 30 count by this point. Like, this is insane. This is indeed insane. We don't know what is going on, but it must be the creation of Justin. This Dark X now goes for yeah, the pin. Well, there it is. There and it is. It's over. Dark it X and Bill Nemeth have just put away TJ Youngblood. And I think that we can quite uh, quite understand that this means that TJ Youngblood has been kicked out of the following. Because there has been a lot of animosity between uh, TJ Youngblood and the rest of the followers of Justin L. Peralt ever since he decided that his own championship ventures were more important than that of the group. When he, when he challenged Baphomet, and later try to win the finals of the Tag Team World Cup. You know, so I, I think there's quite a logical reason for them to be upset with TJ, but I mean, is this the way to go about it, Ed? You know what it means, right? This means that the hero of Greece has won his match, ladies and gentlemen. The hero of Greece, the terrorist of Greece, the main terrorist leader of Greece, because. Greece is just a terrorist country at this point, has won his match. Yeah, well, you can see, if we have walked around this country, you can see how terrorism is breathed here. Like, I mean, being being born in such a third world country, it, it, it really makes you have a different emphasis on life. And coming here and seeing how good we have it in UCW, I mean, that's just... It's just weird. As we are going on, because I have to leave now, Ed. You have to do this on your own, this match, because I am going to watch this right front and center. his opponent, accompanied by Sunshine, and from Edinburgh, Scotland, weighing in at 240 pounds, Jack Harvey. Big time singles matches on deck here, and Byron, what should we expect to see here tonight? Well, given the shape these superstars appear to be in here tonight, I fully expect to see one of the most competitive matches we've seen in a very long time. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. A former tag team champion against a former X Division champion, Jack Harvey versus Connor Phillips.
and Sonny is endorsing this man. He is endorsing Jack Harvey. He is endorsing Jack Harvey, and even the, another board member that we never see, Scarlett Phillips, goes for the roll-up and one, and a kick out by Jack Harvey. I've never seen this different board member. I don't know who he is. He's called Kelvin. Never seen him. Scarlett Phillips again goes for a roll-up, and another one count as Jack Harvey kicks out. Scarlett Phillips goes for an AA. Hey, hey, I'm Jack Harvey. Is that going to be it? No. Oh, so close. I saw Sonny. Sonny was shaking in his boots. He thought it was done for the Connor Phillips. The man that always leaves. Just won a match against a man he endorses. A man he loves. He respects an evil guy like Jack Harvey. Formerly in a group that was all about chaos, but we've never really seen chaos from them, so I don't really understand what the point is about that, but it doesn't matter. Jack Harvey now, huge knee strike, following up with a bulldog. Picking him up, throwing to another corner. And that's gotta hurt, that shoulder. Ah, against that iron thing. Ah, fuck. Forgot the name. Doesn't matter. I'm in my element here. All right. But yeah, again, about that Kelvin guy. I've never seen him before. Who is he? Who is this mysterious board member? It was always about Sonny, 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 and all of a sudden Sonny has friends. Since when does Sonny have friends? I'm not even his friends, and I commentate with him like, well, usually once for months. Jack Harvey now stomps straight through the heart of Connor Phillips. This match is going on a high pace. Now, the Lutas press. Beautifully done. And some kicks to end it. Can Connor Phillips just, well, show that the board is wrong about him? He doesn't leave when he wants to. Well, he actually does, but. I don't know what his really his point is. He just wants a match. But does he deserve a match? Oh my god, one, two, three, Connor Phillips just won, but the referee was down. Sonny, why didn't you go in the ring and count your How, Sonny? Why? You could have slid in the ring and count one, two, three. You are the owner of UCW, the sole owner. And apparently this board member, Kelvin, is also an owner. Okay, that was just bad. Connor Phillips, maybe get some glasses, because you just missed Harvey by a long... Oh, wait. Wait, what's going on here? Beautifully done by Jack Harvey. And I don't know if I want to see Jack Harvey win. I mean, we saw what he did with the X Division Championship, and I kind of think he was despicable, and he turned into that crazy character, that madness. But of course, he lost that X Division title against the Demon Baffin, and another time, going for the pin, and a kick out by Connor Phillips this time. Jack Harvey can't believe it, and I can even see Sonny being frustrated once again. Maybe because he's never won a match in his pathetic little life. Just saying. I mean, he was thrown out of the rumble and he got his ass kicked with dark X, you know. Maybe, maybe the referee is going to kick his ass next time. I don't know. And a knee strike with Jack Harvey. Not a knee strike, but this time missed. And just taking it a little bit slower. Maybe Connor Phillips is already tired. That's what you get when you leave uh, every month. Like you, you get ring rust and you get tired. You, your stamina is just gone. And another time for the roll-up. He really wants to end this in, a, in just an easy fashion. But it's not going to happen, Connor Phillips. It's not going to happen. Picking him up again. What is he going for? Is he going to go for a powerbomb? Well, it does look like it. No, he's not just the face straight to the turnbuckle. And Connor Phillips is feeling it. He is feeling it. Sonny's also feeling it. But not the way that Connor Phillips is feeling it. 
because he is a little bit down in the dumps at this moment because he doesn't want his prospect, I'm just going to call him his prospect, maybe his student, Jack Harvey, to lose. Jack Harvey is going to learn the ways of the business. That means that Jack Harvey is probably going to get everything that he wants because Sonny is just going to give it to him. Hey, I won a world title shot. Of course you're going to get it, my dear boy, Harvey. You're going to get a title shot. No problem. It's like Sonny becomes his daddy all of a sudden. Now taking him to the outside. Oh, what is Jack Harvey going to do? A spear! Spear! Spear through the barricade! That's got to be enough. That's got to take out Connor Phillips completely out now, out of the match. But can they get in the ring in time? What if this becomes a double count out? What is Sonny going to say then? Oh, well, that was my plan exactly. Jack Harvey now back in the ring. But he's not going to make it a count out. He wants to win this fair. Well, I don't know if it's fair. I just think he wants to punish him more, to be honest. Now grabbing him by the neck to the table. Is he going to put him through the table? No, T-bone suplex. I'm learning, people. I'm learning. And another time, he's going to go for the T-bone suplex again. Well, yes, he is. But the referee is still counting. They need to get back in the ring. And they do just that. Jack Harvey now, is he looking for the end? Is he looking for the end? What is it going to be? Paradigm shift, I don't know how he calls it. Doesn't matter. The referee, one, two. And it's three, ladies and gentlemen. Sonny, his student, Sonny, his baby boy has won the match. Connor Phillips has lost. He has lost the match that he so desperately wanted. The, the dear boy Harvey, little baby boy Harvey, has won. And I can see Sonny just smiling away. He's just hes just a ray of sunshine at this moment. Just smiling, so happy that his little student won. Kelvin doesn't really seem ex like impressed, to be honest. I, I, I don't know who this guy is. I need to talk to him, maybe. Maybe he can, like... Be better than talking to Sonny, you know. But congratulations go out to Jack Harvey. As we take a little break so Sonny can, uh, well, I think he's crying. Oh my god, he's crying tears of joy. He is so proud of his little baby student. Well, it doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a little break and Sonny will be back for our next match. from both these guys, Michael. I'm willing to bet this isn't the last time we see them square off. What an effort we saw here. Truly a great match.
All right, here we go. Another grudge match between Michael Blaze and Kota Matsuda. Two former stablemates from Chaos is calling. Also what Jack Harvey was used to be part of. But of course, now he's with the best there is, the best there was, and the best GM there ever will be, Sunny Sapphire. Triple S. Oh. Who the hell is that Kelvin guy? It's one of the board of directors members from UCW. They're the ones who are beneath me. I'm the one who makes all the final decisions, Ooh. but they have some power here in UCW. Ooh. Because you can't have all the power yourself, right? It's not Germany in World War II, so... You just said they're beneath you. Yes. I, I don't know if he likes that. He wasn't looking so happy, to be honest. Oh, come on, everybody, everybody loves being beneath Sonny. Oh. Everybody loves me on top. Really, Sonny? Uh, Moon I, does, I, yeah. <laughs> so, are you done crying, I, 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 I know that you probably had some questions about the alignment between myself and Jack Harvey. It's a pretty working relationship. He wanted to do something for me. He wanted to prove himself. He wanted us to have a, a bond. A, 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 a relation into each other where I didn't make his life a living hell as other GMs have done to him in the past in other promotions or maybe even in UCW how people um, like Kuhn Westerhoff for example try to abuse their power when they were GM of certain shows and so I told him like well there's one thing you can do for me take out Connor Phillips because he's annoying as hell So that's what okay. he did. And, and, and that, that's it. You're not going to give him everything his heart desires. Well, why do I have to do that? Why do, you, do you want me to do well, that? Because, because I can do that if you want me now. to do that. He's your little puppet now. No, I only have one puppet. Like, there's only room for one puppet in my life, and that's Dylan Mason. And however he wants to call it, my strings are attached, and they'll never leave. Yeah. You know how he's trying yeah. to tell people that he is taking part in Connor Phillips, Connor Boyd, I should say, breaking down. You know who broke Dylan Mason? You know who pushed him? Sonny. Yeah, Dirty Dutch. Sure. Right, if, if that's what you want to believe. I mean, everyone saw that. Dirty Dutch, like, the man that has been retired now, uh, he broke Dylan Mason. Not you, Sonny. You have nothing to do with that. I know that you want to think that you hold all the power over everyone, but you don't. Well, you saw myself and Dylan Mason. He was begging me for that World Heavyweight Championship opportunity. A Canadian Destroyer! Just saw a Canadian Destroyer by Michael Blaze. You know, so... How so? Because you saw how he was against me. I did. And now Michael Blaze is going for... The standing moonsault. So why say it, it's different? As you go for cover, the two and the three, oh. and Michael Blaze vanquishes well. the legacy of Kota Matsuda. But I think it is a little bit fishy. Yeah, he looks a bit, a bit different. Uh, he looks Michael Blaze way more buff than he usually does. Like it's yeah, ridiculous. you can see the veins popping out. You know, like how Jinder Mahal came back. Yeah, that's how he yeah. looks now. The, big the nipples. veins just popping out. Yeah, <laughs> what? Very big nipples. Are you focused on the nipples again? Well, they're kind of standing right, like they're like eyes. They're penetrating my soul. <laughs> well. Bygones be bygones, we are going to look into this UCW. We are not going to let anyone or anything make a fool out of this promotion, as if Michael Blaze maybe is doing right now here against Kota Matsuda, because I don't know. I don't think this has gone fair, and I am going to make sure that we get to the bottom of this. But for now, we are going to take a little break, as we do every time, to make sure that Michael Blaze can celebrate his victory, and we'll be back when our next match starts.
Guys, we have two of WWE's most exciting superstars ready to square off here. And there's nothing quite like seeing two superstars settling it in the ring in one-on-one -on -one action, Michael. Get ready, guys. Big-time singles matches coming up here. And I can assure you these two superstars have been waiting all day to get their hands on each other. Introducing the challenger from Sin City, the hardcore icon, Lady Destroyer. Introducing the champion from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. She is the women's champion, Belle A, the queen. Get ready for some WWE magic. All right, here we go for the UCW Women's Championship match. It is Cruella the Vamp, the challenger, versus the champion, Bella Farfella. Of course, Bella ended the career of the queen, Diana Grace, at, at Midsummer Mayhem. And we have yet to hear, hear your feelings about the recent developments in the women's division. So please let us know how you are feeling right now. I'm uh, I'm I'm feeling all right because I know that someone is coming back soon. I know that someone will get after either Bella or Cruella, and that is of course my lovely wife, Jamie Ultimo Stars. Well, I I I I mean I guess, but. I, I I don't want yeah. to be that guy, but um, isn't it like you know, uh, doesn't she need some time to recover from the whole pregnancy and birthing? I said soon. I didn't say tomorrow. Now, what do you mean with soon? Like that can be twenty twenty for all I know. Well, well, let's say in a month's time. In a, month, in a month, you want time. Janie, yeah. your wife, to depart from her child and go on the road in a month? Yeah. You. Heartless monster! But how am and I the, the monster? They say I am the monster. Well, at I'm least I give and I gave my wife Moon all the time that she needed away from her work to focus on our treasure, Flora. And you just want Janie to go back in like a month? Why don't she? Why doesn't she step back into the ring tomorrow then? Because he needs some rest. So. Oh, now she needs some rest. No, but if she can get back in a month, that's okay. I'm saying it's possible. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Maybe it she'll... depends on how maybe, much rest maybe. she wants. The way you're doing this, she's going to fall into a depression. 
a no, postmortem no, 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 depression. No, 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 no. This is the best moment of her life. Oh wait, and mine. <laughs> great, great. So, so great to see how UCW is really a place for fathers to represent how fatherhood is going to change them. As you see, Cruella going for her first pinfall of the matchup, and Bella kicks out at two after that power bomb in the corner. Hey, that buckle. Remember, bomb. it all happened in oh, Vegas. I don't kick. remember it. Super so kick. It wasn't... Super kick. Straight jacket <clears throat> German by Cruella. What a combo! What a combo at Ultimo. You know what I I want the referee to disqualify Cruella because he has high heels. You know how much that hurts. Well, it's obviously it's not. It's not prohibited to wear high heels in the squared circle at. But look at that! Look at her kicking with the just the heels. It's gotta hurt. Well, I know she's a heel, but you don't have to rub it in. Wow. That's <laughs> just a bad, bad joke. That's uh, that's gonna be on bad taste, yeah. Probably. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, a lot of people have said uh, shit about the women's division. Uh, I mean, especially Flat, who's coming up later tonight in a triple threat match. He has uh, tried to tell everyone that every female is a transgender. I mean, he kind of is on the what? bandwagon of Nyla Rose Wait. at this point. And I mean, I, I'm all for transgender wrestling. As we see, inverted face buster. Inverted face buster by Coelho Devep. Is she going for the pin on Bella? No, she isn't. She is going to continue punishing the champion, who in her mind is a fake champion, Ed. How do you feel about the statements as she rolls her up for the pin? A two! And no, no, no. The referee says that she cut one of her shoulders up, but it must have been a millimeter, Ed. Yeah, it must have been just a small, small place above the mat but yeah no no bella has always been a good champion she always has been good for the women's championship i'm not gonna say anything negative about her and cruella well it's a vampire sonny what do you want me to say it's a vampire i'm, I'm done with vampires i'm done with zombies i'm done with all that mystical crap you know, it's um, just the, the, a human with a fucking problem inside their mind. Well, just I'm, not, I'm not trying to ask you about that, but I am trying to ask you about the statement she makes. And also about the statement that one of your fellow competitors, Vlad, made about the whole women's division. How do you feel well, about a man taking shots at the women? Well, the problem with Vlad is, is that Vlad is just as delusional as Cruella is. Vlad has come back and the only thing he's doing is attacking everybody because he's so insecure. He's still an insecure little kid because he cannot get what he wants. He cannot get back on top. He isn't better than anybody here and he cannot handle it. He's just an insecure little kid that is not getting his little presence. That's all the flat is. So he cannot stand new people like Indra Jaye coming here and making, trying to make a statement, he could not have it that me and Rainbow Wolf are doing everything for the fans, because he doesn't care about any of that. I don't even think he cares about himself. I just think he hates everything. Well, now Bella with the inverted face buster immediately transitions into the pinfall. Referee needs to get into position. The one, the two, and a kick out by Cruella at two and a half. And you see the frustration on the face of our women's champion, Cruella, as she gives a, swick, a swift kick in the stomach here on Cruella. And I mean, I heard about you and, and I heard what you said about Vlad. And I think it's just a very weird thing to say as she holds her up. And, oh, just... Just, just drops her? That's her drop on her ankles. Maybe she did some damage to the ankles as she kicks out at oh, one. No. But I Nothing feel but like it's a very weird situation with Vlad. I think it's a very weird statement to make because w why do you say so such things? And do you have any proof of it? Because otherwise you're just, you know, spouting nonsense, no, you he, know. He, he's just spouting nonsense. He doesn't have proof of anything. It, it's just him being done with being a vampire because he finally saw that it was all a facade as a huge knee strike hit by Cruella. Is that going to be enough? Referee in position. And just a two count. 
Yeah, it, it's just like he's done with being a vampire. He saw that it was all a facade. It was all just a joke. And now he wants to just be angry at the world and everybody. It, it's not about anyone in specifically or anything. It's just he hates everyone, Sonny. Yeah, that that that's very true. But I mean, I mean, he was a vampire. Nobody came up to him, told him that it's not real. Nobody told everybody that everybody that pretends to be a vampire is secretly just a person in cosplay. I mean, I mean, we let I, people, we let people, let people be people. If a vampire is what you want to be, then it's good for you. If you're not bothering, do me. you think Baphomet really is a demon? No, but I I do think that I am letting him in his own self-value without telling him that I am going to make his boundaries. I'm going to tell him what to do. If that's what you want to be, then that's fine. If you're going to be a respectful person about it, which is what Vlad has done to this point. But coming back, now being a rock star, you know, I'm surprised he hasn't tried to marry Eileen at this point. She sees the rock chick. It's kind of a match made in heaven. Um, you know, so... I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't understand this this rude behavior that he is presenting towards the fine women of the women's division. Because look at them, Bella is a beautiful woman. Cruella is beautiful in her own way. So I cannot why say that. Why not? Oh, of course you have Janie. Uh, you know. Yeah, and and I have uh, restrictions. If I um, go over those lines, I get fined. Yeah. I got some uh, lawsuits against me. As Bella goes for the pin. And the two and, and a three. And enough. Bella retains her women's championship. Yeah, I know you were thinking about my lawsuits, but it doesn't matter. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Well, of course, congratulations go to Bella Farfella as she maintains on top of the UCW women's division. But of course, with newcomer Indra Jaye picking up some crucial wins on Power Struggle, she might have found her latest opponent. As we are going to see what comes next. But for right now, we are going to take a small break and we'll be back as we have two or three more matches left to go here on part one. And we are going to join you right after this.
All right, here we go. And Matrix immediately with the super kick to Anubis. Wow. As we see in the respective corners of Matrix, we see Wesley Walker. And in the corner of Anubis, we see Stefan Bass. Of course, Matrix and Stefan Bass had a singles match at Midsummer Mayhem, which was broken up by the arrival of Anubis, a much... Uh, much hyped arrival, but it seems like Matrix is pulling no punches immediately with the inverted face buster and a super kick to start with. And now Anubis trying with the jawbreaker to find an opening and a big clothesline. And Ed, how do you feel about the arrival of Anubis? Well, the arrival of Anubis is kind of a weird thing because apparently he's so all whoa, and look at that move going for well, dragon sleeper type move. But yeah, um, this is all about some sort of freedom, but Anubis doesn't believe in it anymore. It's really weird, because it looked like this masked man sanity. He recruited these guys, let them free out of their asylums, their minds. He let them free, and Anubis just disregards that. I don't know what's going on. Um, I, I guess, I, 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 re I really don't understand the motivations that this guy called Sanity has at this point. I haven't never seen his face. I hardly see his mask. Um, you know, he's a person yeah, that is shrouded in mystery at this point. And Matrix now with a swan tom bomb. And it is 100% on point here as he is trying to make short work of Anubis. And ever since Matrix finally took away that resistance uh, moniker that he had as a twisted spinning suplex. What an incredible new move here, broken out by Matrix. And will this be enough? Yes, it is wow. enough for Matrix to punish Anubis for trying to get up in his business. Yeah, it seems that was all that it took. And maybe this, this, this maybe this has something to do with the well, that sanity said a few days ago. He said a dragon can be fragile and unless you have the right one. Is this even the right one? I mean, there's I'm more people sure. called dragons I, in I, UCW. I, 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 I am not it's like sure. we have a whole dragon locker room, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm not sure about no. anything that's going on at this point. But what I do know is that Matrix has found a new fire within himself. And, um, you know, so... I mean, congratulations yeah, to Matrix, congratulations for winning. Yeah, I mean, it's a, not, a much needed victory, a big victory. Yeah, it is. Congratulations to Matrix, and we'll be right back with our next match. I want to see the rainbow high in the sky I want to see you and me on a bird flying away And then I hope to see your smile every night and day I want to see the rainbow high in the sky I want to see you and me on a bird flying away And then I hope to see your smile every night
All right, here we go. A ladder match at something you are very familiar with. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you want to give your personal insight on how to lose to Rainbow Wolf in ladder matches? <sighs> I mean, you've done it twice now. You're kind of the expert. Yeah, I'm the expert of losing in the ladder match, I know. Well, you, you, I mean, if you want to be the expert at singles matches losing, I mean, I can give you... I mean, I, lo I lost for the case. I lost again for the case. I lost, I think it was the X Division Championship on a ladder or something else. I don't know. I lost a lot of ladder matches in my career, in my short career. Have you ever won something? I mean, I don't want to be a dick, but um, you know, it seems like you. Championship. For how long? Like a, a week, right? Like even Sander has held the championship longer than you. Yeah. Well, on to some more positive things, like the career of Rainbow Wolf, for example. Um, I mean, I mean, I know myself and Rainbow Wolf had a had a very big talk, and I talked him out of. You know, and he appreciated my advice. I mean, I, I, he didn't say it to my face, but I know that he did. Because I told him, Rainbow, you weren't there for me. Why should I be there for you? And that's just the point I'm trying to make here in UCW. You know, people but you gave saying, someone that doesn't, doesn't deserve this match. You gave him the opportunity. You know, if you are going to tell me right here, straight up to my face, that somebody like me yeah, deserves a championship opportunity then go ahead and walk right out of this commentary booth right now. No, but Rainbow Wolf had a point system. He had a point system on who deserved it more. And if Big Brom was somehow on top of that, I cannot help that that's his system. Listen, I don't care if he beat him in a game of rock, paper, scissors. At the end of the day, he is not going to allow being allowed to choose his own opponent. Because you know what Rainbow does when he chooses his own opponent? He becomes a hypocrite. A hypocrite of the highest degree. Because he is trying to give his friends opportunities that they never deserved. Iron Bison is someone who has been tearing it up all around the world. And I want the one who has a future championship opportunity to be the best of the best in this business. And Rainbow and that is, Rainbow is one of the best in this business. But he is not staying on top if he is going to test himself against the bottom of the barrel. Against no, the it's not about the bottom of the barrel. It's about important. people that deserve it. It's about people that deserve the opportunity because you never gave them the chance, Sonny. You Listen, never gave I, them the I, opportunity. I booked Big Bram more matches than he can imagine. I booked Wesley Walker a you lot know, of matches. And you know what Ray they kept Austin doing? Ray could even win. Yeah, Ray Austin you know could what even all those people match. have in common? They never win. They always lose. But why do you want me to give them a ladder match where they don't even have to pin legitimately winning a match? No, they just have to incapacitate their opponent so that they can grab but the Why briefcase. do you give it to, to the Iron Bison? Why do you give it to him? Because I know Iron Bison. I saw him compete all around the world. He's one of the strongest men that but I have ever seen. But he hasn't done anything in UCW. Well, not on You'll camera, no. Right Off now. camera, he has been trying to decimate, and he's been talking to me, and I have something like, I want oh, to see him against Rainbow you. Wolf. Yeah, he yeah. asked me. He asked me for an opportunity. Not against Rainbow Wolf, he asked me for a general opportunity. And I knew... Oh, you don't I think, knew. oh, I'm just going to give him a real match. No, you're this straight up going match. to... Yeah, but you're straight up going for, oh, you can win the chase, the case briefcase. You can win Casey. I mean, he doesn't deserve that. I don't care what he does or doesn't deserve in your eyes. In my eyes, he did deserve it. So that's what's gonna happen. Is it's this another one of your puppets, just like Jack Harvey? No, he's not a puppet. I mean, look at those muscles. I could never control that. The fact I, of the matter I, is, at this right now, the Chase muscles? the Case briefcase is in more jeopardy than it was in the match against you, Ed. Because Rainbow, he has his oh, match. Rainbow. He had his hands right on the briefcase. Well, Iron Bison grabbed the briefcase. Rainbow Wolf in no hurry to stop him from grabbing the briefcase. Maybe he wants he to knows lose it, he Maybe has he this. wants he to lose knows the He knows he has it. He knows the colors are with him. And Iron Bison doesn't have the colors. 
He doesn't have that positive five. Well, now Rainbow Wolf doesn't has his hands. Attitude. His hands on the chase the cage briefcase. Do it, Rainbow. He has his Do hands it. on it. Iron Bison is not moving. Now he is struggling to get back to his feet. But the Do art it, of I know unhooking how a briefcase is, is the hooking. most difficult art in all of professional wrestling. And he doesn't get it. It's so difficult to unhook that briefcase. It's well, like yeah, it, it really is. It's ridiculous how difficult it is. Why do you make it like that? I mean, it should just be you grab it. Oh my God! Iron Bison on the top of the ladder. Iron on the top of the rainbow and a jumping knee drop right from the he top, was on of, top that of the ladder, not on top of the rainbow. Way up high. Don't say. There now, is flying. a new briefcase How many holder. locks do you have? On Listen, that briefcase. I want to make it difficult for my <laughs> for my competitors, okay? How many locks do you have on there? No, it's not. It's it's one lock, and the secret code is a no. secret code word that I no. implanted in it. So only if oh you can guess God. that word, you can you can make it. But the thing, the fact of the matter is, it's is that Flora, Rainbow Wolf it? is becoming hypocritical. It's Flora, isn't and it? And I think it's very very sad that you don't see that ad. It's Flora, isn't it? No, it's not you Flora. You have Flora as, as the lock. You see uh, Rainbow Wolf break dancing at this point. <laughs> doing the he shuffle. Just, Very fortnight of him. Trying to get back to the fans. Trying to give back to the fans. Yeah, I think the fans have they, also been coming. Giving it back to the fans. Giving the fans what they came He's for. He's giving it to the Rainbow fans. Rainbow Wolf okay. dancing. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. Sure. Come on, Rainbow. Come on, get up, Rainbow. Come on. Yeah, okay, he's getting up again. But Iron Bison isn't smart enough to guess your password. Do you have a hint on there or something, you know? Uh, dude, this is not a scavenger hunt. <laughs> well, you said it's your word. I mean, yeah. this could be an infinite oh, number Rainbow of Wolf words. With Iron Bison on his shoulders. AA, AA from the top of the ladder. Incredible strength. Shown here by that's Rainbow it. Wolf. That's it. And now that's Rainbow gotta Wolf be it. is going up to the top of the ladder. And he has his hands on his briefcase. For now, it's still his briefcase. But will he be able to unhook it as Iron Bison is getting back to he, his he feet? Has it. To his feet. He has and it. Rainbow Wolf has unhooked what was the, the password? briefcase. I'm not going to tell you. Rainbow Wolf can tell you later if he has figured it out. Or he has just, you know, smithered the, brief the lock on the briefcase. I don't know what he did to open it, but he has been able to open it. And congratulations to end. Rainbow Wolf, because that means that next month, at Famous Last Words, Rainbow Wolf will defend the case against the one he wants to defend it against, Wesley Walker. Making his way to the ring from New York, weighing in at 220 pounds, Arthur Steiner.
guys, the upcoming triple threat match should be nothing short of spectacular. Yeah, especially considering what a victory could do for the career of the superstar who walks out of here with the win. London, England, weighing in at 220 pounds, the Hooligan. And what's the game plan for these superstars heading into this triple threat match? Michael, a lot of times you'll see a competitor lurking in the weeds, just waiting for the right time to strike. But knowing these three superstars the way I do, I doubt we'll see any of them standing by idly here tonight. Guys, we have triple threat action coming up as three of WWE's top superstars are set to square off. And Michael, I can realistically envision any one of these three competitors having their hand raised in victory here tonight. Alright, it is the final match on part one showing of Global Domination, Affines. It is a triple threat match between Arthur Stein, good old Vlad Michaels and Robert Long. Of course, these three men were all part of the Newcomers Six Pack Challenge. And all three were unsuccessful, blaming one another for their loss. And here we are with this match, Ed. And which one of the newest people in UCW has surprised you the most? Well, what surprised me is that a uh, good old VD just stole Jeroen Mercury's guitar. That's a sick guitar. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a weird thing to do. And now he's hanging in the corner and Arthur Stein immediately taking advantage with a chin breaker right on him. And a close line by Robert Long takes him down. And it seems like uh, there's a lot of animosity between these new guys on who is the, who's the best or whose fault it is that they lost to Brad Adonis. Yeah, but what's, what is it going to help that you're going to fight people that, oh, no, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. It's your fault. It's all of your faults because you didn't win. None of you won. Well, yeah, that's true. As we see uh, a flying simple. clothesline by Arthur Stein and Robert Long has rolled out of the way. 
And now a thrust kick by good old VD. And now a flying forearm by him as Robert Long is still on the outside. So it's a one-on-one -on -one match right now. And Vlad Michaels with the first pinfall kick out at one by Artur Stein. Yeah, I know, I, I know what you mean. I mean, it's, it's a very weird thing to be uh, to be bitching about. But at this point, I mean, they just want to prove that they are the best. You know, usually when you come into a company, right? Uh, you, you come in, you're the new guy. There's not... Yeah, you're you're the new guy, and this time, like six new people came in at once. So you want to stand out from those six. You you want to stand out as being the best of the best of the newest people, you know. So I can get yeah, their course. motivations, but it's a bit silly to say no, it's your fault, it's your fault. Uh, at the end of the day, if you watch the match back, you see that Brad Adonis had the had him pinned, and nobody was able to break it up. Not Robert, not Arthur, not the good old VD. So. But yeah, it's, it, it's easier to blame somebody else than blame yourself. That's true. That's a, that's a very true. How very poetic of you. I know. Yeah. I didn't know you had this that, this in you. Uh... Uh, it's all because of uh, Gothi, Shine, and uh, Azure with their poetry, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. friends of mine. So. Yeah, I, I've seen that. I've seen that. Uh, and now Robert Long with the pinfall on Arthur Stein. And a two, uh, no, no, just a one count, didn't even make it to the two. And I mean, there have been, uh, I, I mean, we have seen a, a very competitive match between Archer Stein and Eddie Charisma, and Eddie Charisma oh. even, oh, a low, low blow. blow, a low blow on Vlad Michaels, one, no, by two. Vlad Michaels, by Vlad Michaels, and Vlad Michaels wins, good old VD has won with a low blow on Robert Long, and Archer Stein was just not able to be there in time. And I mean, th this is a very weird thing. Vlad Michaels using a low blow to win this match, Ed. Ed? Sorry, sorry. I was just uh, flabbergasted by that low blow at the end. It is a very like, weird thing to see. But Vlad Michaels using, using the low blow to his advantage. Look at that, look at that. Oh, oh low blow to Oof. Robert Long by hurts. Vlad Michaels. It hurts inside, it came crashing down. And this must not bode well for the future of Vlad Michaels. As you see Artie Stein coming in, and he wanted to break it up, but he was just a millisecond too late. Congratulations go out to Vlad Michaels, but the methods he used to win this match are very unethical. And you can be sure that this isn't the last we've seen from either Robert Long or Vlad Michaels. I mean, I mean, it ha it has to be, right? No, it has to be. There has to be. I mean, this is not the way you want to lose. Well, you don't want to lose at all. But this is the way that uh, you, you shouldn't even want to win inside. this way, in my opinion. I mean, I mean, I have lost the no, dark X, but no. I've never once once used a low blow to get an advantage. But for right now, we are going to say goodbye to you on part one. Part two will start in about half an hour at 7 p.m. right this night. Of course, we thank you for being here. We thank you for listening. This was Sunny Sapphire with my co-commentator, Ed. And we'll be right back for part two in half an hour. Till then.